Many people, when they see video games, they think it's a kind of a stupid activity, it's just a waste of time. But in fact, in recent years, researchers have observed that they have some very interesting properties for learning. So my research is on the relationship between technology and cognition, so the, the human mind. I'm Pedro Cardozo Leite. I'm an experimental psychologist and a track fellow at the University of Luxembourg, and we create video games to improve learning. My interest in learning came quite early on. I grew up here in Luxembourg. My parents are Portuguese immigrants. Luxembourg is a very culturally diverse country and this has many advantages, but it also has some challenges. And uh, one of the main challenges, I think, is uh, education. So if you have a classroom with a, a people that are from very different backgrounds, it's very difficult to find one solution that is going to fit uh, all those kids. And so quite early on, I, I, I thought that I wanted to understand better how learning works and how can you make a system that is fair to everybody and I thought that uh, the way to go would be to study the human mind and psychology. And that's what I did. There are many ways to approach learning and uh, it's far more complex than what people might think at first glance and my vision is that we will have some uh, video games that can adapt to people. So uh, if you have a, a student who wants to learn something, that the, the game is going to adapt the difficulty and the challenges to that specific person and be able to improve learning. There has been a group of researchers who made a very interesting discovery that action video games in particular, so compared to other kinds of, of video games, were actually able to train certain cognitive abilities that can have an impact outside of the game itself. For example, your ability to concentrate. And this is something that is of huge importance in the, in the field of learning, because typically when you study something very specific, you just apply it in that specific context. One of the key challenges is to understand why these action video games have these effects. In the lab, usually when you create a setting, you start very simple with something that you can understand. And here you actually have uh, action video games that are very complex. They are like a black box, they are commercial products. In order to get a better understanding of why these games work, you need to create your own games so that you have the control to, to test different versions of the game. So this is one aspect of the work that I'm doing here. We're creating video games to try to understand why action video games are effective at improving cognitive abilities. Making video games is actually a, a whole art in itself. It takes a lot of effort and uh, skills. But if you don't have enough funding to hire people that know this kind of work, you typically have to do it yourself. And so there have been some attempts of researchers to create their own games. And then typically they are a bit uh, suboptimal because they didn't really have the resources to, to make it into something that people would enjoy uh, playing. And uh, with the attract funding, it allows you to, to actually have the resources to make something that, uh, that is actually also fun to play, not only uh, constructed based on science. It's important because if you want to try to grasp that complexity, you actually need to have a lot of data. And uh, our strategy uh, is to try to put video games on the internet and have people play those games. And if you want people to actually use them, it has to be fun. The idea that we came up with is to have a something that we call the behaviors. It's a game that plays out in the space and you are an astronaut. In that world, you have to perform some tasks. So one of the tasks is this one. So it's called multiple object tracking. You have these smileys that are uh, moving around in space and your task is to track them. So you have to, to use your attention and keep concentrated on them. So basically we, we translated a very well-known cognitive task into a, a setting that is a game. So the idea is that you have these uh, objects that are moving in space. So now when I shoot this, you see that there are these blue elements. And I have to keep track of which elements are blue and which ones are red. The larger this number gets, the more difficult it is to track them all. So I think this one was a blue one. Let's see. So this one was correct, but now I did not really pay attention to the other ones. So this is probably an error. No, still OK. Let's try this one. 
Okay, so now I made a mistake and the, the game shows me that these four were the, were the ones that I had to track. People, when they play this, they're also going to produce data and this data gives us a better understanding, which we are going to put back into the game. And we hope to have this kind of a feedback loop that allows us to continuously improve on our system and our understanding of these mechanisms. Then the second part is uh, we try to create uh, new forms of digital technology, so in particular new kinds of video games with the intention to use these games to enhance uh, cognitive abilities. So one of the uh, approaches that we have uh, started to work on is to uh, develop games that help uh, kids improve their math abilities the ability to discriminate, for example, quantities uh, that will then help them in the second step more easily understand mathematics when they are at school. So in this particular game, you have to make a recipe for a magic uh, potion. And then when you, when you put the right ingredients, then the, the child is transformed into some kind of an animal. And it's a, it's a goat. So it's a quite, uh, quite fun. Although it's really hard to get this, this funding, once you have it, you, you are assured that your research topic is actually of uh, high relevance for the national uh, research landscape. It's a very interesting uh, project. I think it can have a, a real impact on, on people's lives. And I'm, I'm working with very smart and creative people. I can basically decide everything I do, I can decide who I hire, uh, what, what to work on, so it's a, it's a freedom that is, uh, for, for a researcher, it's, uh, it's like paradise almost. <laughs>